How can we determine correct and faulty test items? How do we ensure test effectiveness and fairness? How can we improve the quality of the test? To answer these questions, let's discuss item analysis. But before that, welcome to assessment and evaluation with Teacher Lay. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. Dylan William, a British educationalist and emeritus professor of educational assessment at the UCL Institute of Education, once stated, If our students learned what we taught, we would never need to assess. It is only through assessment that we can discover whether the instructional activities in which we engage our students resulted in the intended learning. Assessment really is the bridge between teaching and learning. For that purpose, educators give various assessments such as tests, quizzes, and exams to gain insights about their academic standing. Through examinations, Educators can identify specific learning problems and gaps to do something about them. It offers answers to questions such as 1. Which topics are students struggling with? 2. Is a particular question as difficult, complex, or rigorous as you intend it to be? 3. Do students really know the answer or just applying test-taking strategies to eliminate the wrong answers? Four. Which items should be eliminated or revised before use in subsequent test administrations? 5. Does the item do an excellent job of separating students who know the content from those who may merely guess the correct answer? One way to increase visibility into student learning gaps is via item analysis. What is item analysis? Item analysis is a statistical technique that is used for selecting and rejecting the items of the test based on their difficulty value and discriminated power. Item analysis provides evidence that a test measures what it is supposed to measure and produces consistent results. Reviewing item quality helps ensure that educators obtain the best possible information to make instructional decisions. Basically, item analysis reveals 1. Items that are too easy are too difficult. 2. Items that failed to show the difference between skilled and unskilled examinees. 3. Items that are scored incorrectly. In addition, Hetzel stated that when norm reference tests are developed for instructional purposes, to assess the effects of educational programs, or for educational research purposes, it can be essential to conduct item and test analyses. These analyses can evaluate the quality of items and the test as a whole. Such analyses can also be employed to revise and improve both items and the test as a whole. So what are the steps in item analysis? Step 1. Score the test. For large-scale testing, Answer sheets are usually scanned by a machine to capture test takers' item responses. Manual scoring is often done for classroom tests wherein the pupil's answers are checked against a prepared scoring key. They are considered correct for multiple choice items that matched the scoring key and obtained a one point credit. Step 2 Arrange the test papers from highest to lowest. This is easy. Just place the highest score on top, and the lowest score must be placed at the bottom of the ream of test papers. Test papers with the same scores don't have to be arranged alphabetically. Step 3. Separate the top upper 27% and the bottom lower 27% of the cases. The 27% of the students at the top and the 27% at the bottom are separated for the analysis. Vierce managers stated that, 27% is used because it is shown that this value will maximize differences in normal distributions while providing enough cases for analysis. There need to be as many students as possible in each group to promote stability. At the same time, it is desirable to have the two groups be as different as possible to make the discriminations clearer. This was supported by Kelly as cited in Popham, 1981. He stated that the use of 27% maximizes these two characteristics. 
After doing this, just set aside the middle set of test papers. Let's have an example. Suppose you had a tryout sample of 50 cases, the number of items is 50, and the scores are arranged from highest to lowest. The highest score is 50, and the lowest score is 6. 27% to 50 is 13.5. Round it up and label the first 14 cases as the upper group, and the last 14 cases as the lower group. In the upper group, the highest score is 50, and the lowest score is 40. In the lower group, the highest score is 23, and the lowest score is 6. Following the given instruction, just set aside the test paper of the 15th to 36th student. Step 4. Prepare a tally sheet. Get the number of students from the upper and lower groups who got the item correct for each item. Initially, create a table with 3 columns and 51 rows for the heading and 50 questions. The first column is for item no. This column reflects the 50 items or questions. The second column is for the number of students from the upper group who got the given item correctly. Similarly, the third column is for the number of students from the lower group who got the given item correctly. As reflected in the table, 14 or all the students in the upper and lower group got item number 1 correctly. Also, all the students from the upper group got item number 4 correctly, but only 7 or half of the students from the lower group got item number 4 correctly. Step 5. Convert the frequencies to proportions by dividing the number of correct answers by the number of scores in the upper and lower groups. For item number 2, divide 13, which represents the students from the upper group who got the given item correctly, by 14, the number of students in the upper group. Thus, 0 0.93 is the proportion. To get the proportion of the same item number in the lower group, just divide 11 by 14. Thus, 0 0.79 is the proportion. Do the same with the rest of the items. Step 6. Compute for the difficulty index. Use the given formula. What is difficulty index? According to Wood, 1960. Difficulty index is simply the percentage of students taking the test who answered the item correctly. The larger the percentage getting an item right, the easier the item. The higher the difficulty index, the easier the item is understood. To compute the item difficulty, get the sum of the proportion of the upper and lower group, and then divide it by 2. Example for the first item. Just get the sum of the proportions of the upper and lower group, then divide it by 2. Thus, 1 plus 1 equals 2 over 2, will give you 1 as the difficulty index for the said item. Try it. Get the difficulty index of items 2, 3, and 4. You are given 30 seconds to compute. Now check your answers. You got it. Very good. Use the given interpretation table to make sense of the difficulty index value. If you obtain a difficulty index of 0 0.10 and below, the item is said to be very difficult. If it ranges from 0 0.11 to 0 0.25, the said item is difficult. If it ranges from 0 0.26 to 0 0.75, the said item is moderate or average. If it ranges from 0.76 to 0.90, the said item is easy. And if it ranges from 0.91 and above, the said item is very easy. As discussed earlier, item difficulty is determined by merely computing the proportion of students who answered the item correctly. When developing a teacher may test, it is good to have easy, average, and difficult items with positive discrimination indices.
If you are developing a standardized test, aim for average items with acceptable discrimination index. Other references suggest that for both criterion referenced and norm referenced tests, the items should fall within the average range, from 0. 26 to 0 0.75, which means that the items are not easy nor difficult. Meanwhile, items with difficulty levels of 0 0.81 and 1.00 can still be included in the final form provided that they will undergo revision before inclusion in the test. Lastly, items that are too difficult to answer should be discarded because they do not give the examiner's ability or achievement level. So how should you use this information? Some references suggest that the best approach for teacher-made tests is to form a mix of difficulties, a few very difficult, some difficult, some average, some easy, and a few very easy. However, the difficulty level should be consistent with the degree of difficulty of the concepts being assessed. Very easy items and very difficult items don't do a good job of discriminating between students who know the content and those who do not. However, you may have an excellent reason for putting either type of question on your exam. For example, some instructors deliberately start the exam with an easy question or two to settle down anxious test takers or help students feel some early success with the exam. Step 7. Compute for the Discrimination Index What is Discrimination Index? The Item Discrimination Index is a measure of how well an item is able to distinguish between examinees who are knowledgeable and those who are not. The item will have low discrimination if it is so difficult that almost everyone gets it wrong, or so easy that almost everyone gets it right. If the test in a single item measure the same thing, one would expect people who do well on the test to answer that item correctly and those who do poorly to answer the item incorrectly. A good item discriminates between those who do well on the test and those who do poorly. To compute for the discrimination index, just subtract the proportion of the lower group from the proportion of the upper group. Example for the first item. Just get the difference of the proportions of the upper and lower group. Thus. 1 minus 1 equals 0 for the discrimination index for the said item. Try it. Get the discrimination index of items 2, 3, and 4. You are given 15 seconds to compute. Now check your answers. You got it. Very good. Use the given interpretation table to make sense of the discrimination index value. For both criterion referenced and norm referenced tests, the discrimination index of an item should be at least 0 0.20 to effectively distinguish between test takers who knew the item from those who did not. If you obtain a discrimination index of 0 0.19 and below, the item is said to be low. If it ranges from 0 0.20 to 0 0.40, the said item is moderate or average. If it ranges from 0 0.41 and above, the said item is high in terms of discrimination index. Wood, 1960, stated that when more students in the lower group than in the upper group select the right answer to an item, the item actually has negative validity. Assuming that the criterion itself has validity, the item is not only useless, but is actually serving to decrease the validity of the test. A negative discrimination index is most likely to occur with an item that covers complex material written so that it is possible to select the correct response without any fundamental understanding of what is being assessed. A poor student may make a guess, select that response, and come up with the correct answer. Good students may be suspicious of a question that looks too easy, may take the harder path to solve the problem, read too much into the question, and may end up being less successful than those who guess.
Items with a negative discrimination are theoretically indicating that either the students who performed poorly on the test overall got the question correct or that students with high overall test performance did not get the item correct. Thus, the index could signal some problems. 1. There is a mistake on the scoring key. 2. Poorly prepared students are guessing correctly. 3. Well-prepared students are somehow justifying or misled by the wrong answer. In those cases, action must be taken. Items with negative item difficulty must be addressed. How should you use this information? As you examine item discrimination, there are several things you should consider. Very easy or very difficult items are not good discriminators. If an item is so easy that nearly everyone gets it correct, or the item is so difficult that nearly everyone gets it wrong, then it becomes very difficult to discriminate those who actually know the content from those who do not. Nevertheless, a poorly written item will have little ability to discriminate. What should you aim for? It is typically recommended that item discrimination be at least 0.20. It's best to aim even higher. Step 8. Decide whether to retain, revise or reject the item. So how do we decide on which items to retain, revise, and reject? When an item meets the general acceptability guidelines for difficulty and discrimination, you should keep the item. If it falls outside the guidelines, you make a judgment whether to keep, revise, or reject it. To decide whether to retain, revise, or reject the items, first check these guidelines. Items with difficulty index within 0.26 to 0.75 and with discrimination index of 0.20 and above are to be retained. Items with difficulty index within 0.26 to 0.75 but with discrimination index of 0.19 and below OR with discrimination index of 0.20 and above but with difficulty index not within 0.26 to 0.75 should be revised. Items with difficulty index not within 0.26 to 0.75 and with discrimination index of 0.19 and below should be rejected. For the given example we are aiming for items that have an average level of difficulty and with moderate or high discrimination index, thus. We reject item 1 because it is very easy and has low discrimination index. We reject item 2 because it is easy and has low discrimination index. We will revise item 3 because it is easy but has moderate discrimination index. And we retain item 4 because it has average difficulty and has high discrimination index. Try it. Pause for now and try to complete the given table. Follow the remaining steps in item analysis. 1. Convert frequencies to proportions. 2. Get the difficulty index of each item. 3. Get the discrimination index of each item. 4. Decide whether to retain, revise, or reject the items. Now check your answers. Very good. Here are some additional reminders. Difficulty levels should never be negative. If you get a negative result, recalculate. Item discriminations can be negative. That is, more students in the low scoring group can get the item correct than those in the top scoring group. The general advice is to reject, revise, or rewrite items entirely with negative item discriminations. So, here are the steps in item analysis. What other topics on assessment would you like to learn? Type in the comment box below. See you in our next video. Thank you for watching.